All right. I am recording. So we're on 9.6, page 3. First example, solve the right triangle. What did it mean when it said solve the right triangle? It meant more than that. Find the missing sides and the missing angles. So you're finding more than just the missing side. Okay, you're finding three things here every single time. So to find the missing side, we have two sides. So how do we find the missing side? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do the quick route since you guys already did it. Um, which one is missing, a leg or a hypotenuse? hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. So you did 3 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. 9 plus 4 is? 13. What is the square root of 13? Round to the nearest tenth? 3.6. 3.6. So you don't put C equals 3.6. You are going to name the side. So how do I name that side? AB. Yes, AB. But it equals a 3.6. To finish the problem, we need to find the measure of angle A. And then we need to find the measure of angle B. Which one do we want to find first, A or B? Sure. So from B... You want to label the sides they gave you. So what kind of side is 2? Opposite. Opposite. And then what kind of side is 3? Tangent. So which trig ratio am I going to use? Tangent. Tangent. From angle we said B equals the opposite, which is 2, over, over the adjacent 3. I want to get angle B by itself. I need to get rid of tangent. So what do I use to get rid of the tangent? The inverse. So you're going to hit shift tangent in your calculator. And then type in two thirds. Because those are angles. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so shift tangent of two thirds. What do we get? Round it to nearest tenth. 33.7 .7 degrees. Good. We'll do something similar to find the measure of angle A. We'll label our sides. So, what kind of side is three now? And two is? So which trig ratio are we going to use? Tangent. Tangent again from A. So then you'll have the opposite, which is 3, over the adjacent 2. To get rid of tangent, I need to use the inverse. So shift tangent of 3 over 2. Round it to the nearest tenth we get? 56.3. You're fine. He's coughing. It's okay. Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Let angle H be an acute angle. Use a calculator to approximate the measure of angle H to the nearest tenth of a degree. So you're finding an angle. What do you have to use when you're finding an angle? Inverse. The inverse. So to find H, you're going to use shift sign of 0.2. So the measure of angle H is 11.5. Next one, we got tangent of h equals 1. So to get h by itself, you have to use the inverse. So shift tangent of 1 is 45. Bless you. We're going to have to do the same thing. 5, we're going to hit shift cosine of 0.33. The measure of angle h would be? 7.7. And then last, shift sign of 0.89. Okay. So you do need to know the difference between what we just did and a question that looks like sine of 55. Um, what were we looking for in the problems we just did? An angle. But in this problem, you already have the angle. So what would you do if you wanted to find sine of 55? You just type it in. Type it in. Do you hit the shift button for this one? No. no. You hit the shift button up here when you're looking for an angle. Okay? So make sure you can see the difference. You can flip when you're ready. Terrell and Von Asia were the only ones looking at the screen when I did that, so hopefully um, everyone else got that. We're going to do number eight. We're going to skip number seven and finish it tomorrow just to make us move along. It says solve the right triangle, round the decimal answers to the nearest tenth. 
So, when it says solve the right triangle, how many pieces am I looking for on number eight? Three pieces. What am I looking for? Two angles and a side. Okay, so let's find our side first. We already have two sides, so we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Are we missing a leg or a hypotenuse? Leg. I'm going to call it B. Why not? So 21 squared. Oh, sorry. I was just plugging it in. Hold on. You're fine. Now, 21 squared is... 75 squared is... Subtract 441. B squared equals... Sorry, 5,000... 100 or 400? 184. 184. You sure do. Square root is 72. So what is the name of that side? Is it ED. Is 72. Then we're going to find the measure of angle C and the measure of angle D. Which one do we want to find first? She said C. And she's a lady, so we're going to find angle C. <laughs> so we want to label the sides they gave us. What kind of side is 21? Adjacent. And then 75 is? So which trigger ratio are we going to use? Cosine. From angle C. Equals the adjacent, 21, over the hypotenuse, 75. So we're going to hit shift, cosine, 21 over 75. Round it to the nearest tenth. 73.7. 73.7. 7. All right, and then to find angle D, we'll do the same thing. Label our sides. What kind of side is 21 now? Opposite. Opposite. And 75 is still the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. sine from angle D. And it equals the opposite, we said 21, over the hypotenuse. So use the inverse. So angle D equals 16.3. 16.3. What should all the angles add up to? 180. You can go ahead and put that aside for now. We'll finish the other problem tomorrow. Um, you're actually going to get a new set of notes for a second. We're going to talk about word problems. <laughs> I believe 8 out of 20 on your next test are word problems. So you're not learning any new information. This is it. You're going to have a word problem. You're going to decide if you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem or a trig ratio. So in order to do a word problem, the best thing is to draw a picture. All of our pictures should eventually look like a right triangle because we're dealing with right triangles. So I'm going to teach you what words represent the um, vertical side of a right triangle, what words represent the horizontal, and then what words represent the hypotenuse. So you can correctly label them. Okay? So. Thank you, Lisa. You said okay? Oh, thank you, Layla. You're what? You're a unique person. You're actually very nice. Yeah, I love Jerome. What do you mean? No, you didn't. Jerome is my favorite actor. Put it on. I do not switch it every day. It's been the same all year. He says he's a man. That is the most awkward thing. I don't like. I don't like. I'm uncomfortable with it. I miss Malcolm. Why can't you just <laughs> let me? Miss Malcolm. I love everybody. I don't love everybody. I don't either. Guess here. I strongly. I like that name. Okay, so we're gonna start with the vertical side. I try really hard to um, not make it known when I. I always say I 
don't have favorites. I have least favorites. It's kind of true. So who's the favorite? It's, it's usually the being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do <laughs> first thing we're going to talk about is the vertical side will always be the height of something. That's the first point. Build it. Come on. We're behind. The height of something. Right there. Height. First point. So the vertical side will represent the height of something. You see how it's pointing to the vertical side? The height of something. So the height of building, the height of a person, something like that. It'll also represent like a pole. A pole. A pole. A pole, like a flag, a pole, um, electric pole, telephone pole, or uh, the pole I'm about to show you, the high ropes pole, things like that. Um, it also represents a wall. A wall should be up and down. Should be. Sometimes it's not, but in geometry we assume. <clears throat> um, now there's a tree. So from the very bottom of a tree to the very top of a tree will be measured. Um, and then the top of a blank. So the top of a slide, I would write that in. A top of a building. This is my sixth year of teaching trigonometry. Um, so these words are, make sure you write in anything that I put on the screen. Because this is like word for word what word problems will be like. They're also on the SAT and ACT. So the same words um, that I'm teaching you. Um, another thing would be the length of a box. Could also be the length of a TV, uh, the length of a soccer field, a uh, football field, basketball court. You'll see a soccer field. All right, this so that's vertical, horizontal. So can anybody take a guess what the horizontal side will usually be? Ground. The ground. Which the grass is on the ground. So the ground, that's like 50% of the time, it'll be the ground. It's not going to mention the ground. You're just going to have to know that slides sit on the ground. And buildings, they're on the ground. And most people, unless mentioned otherwise, you know, unless Romeo's in a balcony, people are usually standing on the ground. So that's that. Um, the distance from a building, um, a pole, or a base, so I'd write in all of those words, the distance from a building, a pole, or a base, you're going to see the word base a lot. When you think of base, you think of bottom. the bottom of something. Okay? So your base here would be from his feet to the base of the building. So that would be the distance um, from him. Then there is a shadow on the ground. This could be by a tree. Um, I've seen it by... Um, like a lamp pole or something. A shadow, because shadows lay on the ground. the ground. This is actually most commonly missed. People think that the hypotenuse is the shadow. Well, we don't see the Indeed. shadows in the air, yes. <laughs> shadows are on the ground. And then the width, the width of a box, the width of a field, the width of a court. Things like that. Now we're going to talk about the most important of all. The hypotenuse, you don't have to write that in because that's just what it's called. The longest side is the hypotenuse. Um, so anything that is leaning or unstable, you want to write that in? Anything leaning or unstable? Leaning or unstable. Can anybody guess what I drew? A fly. Uh, a kite. Okay, a kite. Um, so what I mean by unstable, the string of a kite would be a hypotenuse. Um, reason being, uh, do kites fly straight up in the air? They're not a balloon. And they don't fly horizontal unless you've got a mad force wind or maybe you're out in the hurricane. So um, normally what you'll see on a kite problem is it'll ask about the height from the ground to the kite or whatever. And the string would be your hypotenuse. So that's your unstable portion. Um, another popular one, uh, this is Moby. You've heard of him, yes? Yes. Okay. What is the hypotenuse here? The ramp. The ramp. Yep. Let's go ahead and write that in. So the ramp. If you had Miss Hat, you, you did that. These were a sixth grade, uh, whatever. Anyway, so the ramp. 
So what would the vertical portion of the triangle be called? The actual round. The height of the box that you pull out. Yeah, the height of, I would call it a platform or a wall or something. And then the horizontal is floor. The, get the ground. Um, another, I don't recommend this, but what do you think? <laughs> this would be? The ladder. The ladder. So this is oh. so common for people to get this wrong. Ladders do not go straight up and down. Unless you work in a circus. <laughs> or you're in an apartment building and you're talking about the fire escape. But we're not talking about that in geometry. Anytime we talk about a ladder, it will be leaning against a wall. Um, think of like, they're called A-frame ladders. And look like this. Either way, it, it's diagonal. So there's your ladder. And then a rope or a wire hanging from a pole. I'll show you an example. This would include the... Not rope, it's like strain from a kite. But your same idea. I would think of like straight down. For a kite? You should call a rope or a wire. I will show you. So my job before I um, before I well I graduated college and then I went and I worked in New York. Um, the upstate New York, not in the city. Anyways, so I was a high ropes instructor. This is a high ropes course. Um, this is me, I was going over. These are the two people that work. Anyways, so what it means by wire, if you look, there are these, um, these poles are huge. I'm, I might have been able to touch my hands around the side. Um, but, so there's string coming down. It's not string, it's a cable, but you get it. Comes down, um, it's to help keep it uh, completely vertical and to stabilize it when there's like wind and you know, whatever. So this is what it's talking about. But this is a side note. This was my, if it paid money, this is what I would do. That's me. <laughs> so my last heights. day, what? You're not scared of heights. Uh, well, so here's the thing. I am, but no. So look, so what happens is you, you're on the ground. Um, this is not me. You're on the ground, you climb up this. This is the most unsafe part because it's just a ladder hanging up against a, Oops. if you see there's a dude holding it. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, and then there are stakes. They are like big staples, if you want to think of it that way. So like, you know, big enough for your hand to fit through and your foot kind of. Um, so anyways, you get up here, and if you look, um, these are called lobster claws. You're always hooked in two places. Um, they're hooked into your harness, so he's sitting on a harness. Um, they're both hooked up here. When you're going from one side to the other, you're always hooked in. So, like, let's say both of my lobster claws were here. I'd unhook one and clip it in. I'd make sure it's clipped in. Mm -hmm. Then I would unhook the other, and so it's super safe. Super safe. Anyways, I liked it. My last day, this is my last day, so you can see the staples sticking out. This is what you would climb up. This is the swing. So if you look, this guy, um, this is a big swing. So you get hooked up, and then you, like, launch off. The platform. Super great, terrifying. Anyways, it was like, um, what is it called? Not a hazing, but what is it? Initiation. You had to um, clip yourself into the swing, and then like nobody would help you. So this guy was teaching me how to do it. Um, it's terrifying. This is my least favorite part because you have to sit like on the edge of the swing. So there's a video of me like yelling at everybody because I was really mad that I had to do this. Probably not. Because <laughs> I sound really annoying. Anyways, and then there was this stupid guy over here. He's literally hanging in a hammock just watching it all. It was dumb. Anyways, so you have to clip yourself in, but your your harness is here, so you have to like scoot and it, it's like the tightest cords ever, so you, it's really difficult. Anyways, that's my least favorite part. This was all of us that were certified. That's me. You can hang upside down in a harness. Super fun. We're going back in July. Um, this is where I met my husband and where we got married. Um, not like literally right here, but in this town. Um, so we're going back with our kids, and I'm super pumped. And I'm going to do it again. So to be updated. Are they what? Oh, no. I'll make them do it. <laughs> it's been five, five years. Yeah, no. I'll be able to tell them when they're doing it wrong. It's grass. So it's a big field, actually. 
Oh, you can't see. This is a really big field. There's paintball down here. If that makes sense. This pole is the same as this pole, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Anyways. So the first time I ever um, met my husband, I was actually clipping him in. I was working right here. And Look at first sight. No, not really. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure I clipped him in right. It was like my second or third day there. Did he work there? Uh, no. Kind of, no. He worked, um, he built homes in that area, and they were building homes, like, to the right of this course. So his boss paid for the whole crew to... That's a coincidence, though. Go do it. Yes. Your ship, like, if your ship wasn't that big... I know, isn't it cool? And you yeah. want to know what's extra cool? I'm going to pause. Go. And then the last few, uh, the diagonal of a box or a field. And uh, you can kind of rope this in. Do any of you know how they um, measure the screen of a TV? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It is in inches, but what part of it? Is it the length? Is it the width? It's the, it's the diagonal. So no, it's a diagonal. So you're going to have a TV question sometime, um, and it'll, I don't know, talk about the length and the width. But if, you, if it says it's a 50-inch TV, it's talking about from corner to corner. Oh, I thought so. it'd be like... Nope. That's a good day. Last thing. We still got things to do, y'all. Last thing. North and south go up and down. East and west go side to side. What happens when north, south, east, and west come together? What do they form? Angle. What kind of angle? Right. 90. Or 90. They're perpendicular. So that's just something to remember. We're going to use this. Um, so do not put the word problem notes away. You just put it to the side, and we're going to look for those words and apply them here. So we're going to start pretty simple. Zoe swims. That's my daughter's name. Yes, you're welcome. Zoe swims 14 kilometers west and then 9 kilometers south. How far is she from her starting point? So the first thing we want to do, I would draw a starting point. Literally a point and then write the word start. Which direction does she go? Yeah. It's the west. 14 kilometers. And then she goes south how many? Nine. Nine. What happens when west and south meet? Form a right angle. Form a right angle. Mm. How far is she from her starting point? So, how do I find um, the distance from where she is and where she started? Pythagorean theorem. You're both correct. So, I'm missing a leg or hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So, I'm going to use 9 and 14 as A and B. Nine squared is forty-one. Oh, sorry, fourteen squared. Add them together, we get we're gonna make this a decimal. What do we get? Round to the nearest tenth. Sixteen point six. Good kilometers. Six. Six. Ready to move on? Yes. So you see in the middle of your page, you'll have angle of elevation and angle of depression. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is write in um, that you have to have a horizontal line. So in order to have an angle of elevation or angle of depression, you must have a horizontal line. Angle of elevation will open upward from the horizontal line. So it could look like what's on the screen, or it could open up the other direction. So this would be an angle of elevation from a horizontal line opening up. Angle of depression starts at a horizontal line and opens downward. It could look like that, or what else could it look like? Could look like this horizontal line opening downward. Same thing. So um, we're going to use that in the next, like, I don't know, four problems. You are measuring the height of a lamppost. 
So let's stop there and figure out what we're going to draw. Hi, the lamppost. What part of the right triangle do you think that's going to be? The, the, the side. The, the vertical line. Nice. So we're going to write, I'm going to use the words, height of the lamppost. All right, and then you stand 40 inches from the base of the lamppost. So you're standing. Where are you standing? The, the bottom. bottom. On the bottom, on the ground. And where is the base of the lamppost? The bottom. On the ground, yep. So 40, was it inches? Yeah, inches. So it's kind of where you're standing. 40 inches away. You measure the angle of elevation. So the angle of elevation has to have a horizontal line, which we already have, and then it opens upward, right? So this is an angle of elevation. So you measure the angle of elevation from the ground, so from the ground to the top of the lamppost to be 70. So is that a length or an angle measure? It's an angle measure. It says you measure the angle of elevation from the ground to the top of the lamppost to be 70. Normally they'll have a degree symbol, but here we don't. Find the height of the lamppost. So do we already have that labeled? Yes. We do. We're finding this. Are we going to use a Pythagorean theorem or a trig ratio? Trig, trig ratio. ratio. So we need to label from 70 degrees. What kind of side is X? And then what kind of side is 40? So which trig ratio are we going to use? Tangent. Tangent from, what do we say, 70 degrees equals the opposite, x over the adjacent 40. Multiply both sides by 40. We're going to round to the 10th again. 109.9 inches. Good. When you're ready, you can go ahead and flip. We're going to do one more together. This one's a little bit harder. I'm going to keep my little picture of angle of elevation, angle of depression. It will help us in this problem. It says the top of the slide is 12 feet from the ground. So the top of the slide is 12 feet from the ground. What part of the triangle is that going to be? Vertical. This is the height, yeah. And has an angle of depression of 43 degrees. So let's pause. What do all slides sit on? The ground. The ground. So we got a ground. Um, so let's go back. It says the top of the slide is 12 feet from the ground and has an angle of depression of 43 degrees. So this is kind of where if you don't understand how to read English, you're not going to do super well. What is the subject of this sentence? What has an angle of depression of 53 degrees? The top of the slide. So the top of the slide, which is up here, has an angle of depression of 43 degrees. So in order to have an angle of depression, what do you have to have? You just wrote it down. Um, a, horizontal. a horizontal line. So what you're going to have to do is draw an imaginary one mm -hmm. and draw an angle that goes downward. So this would be an angle of depression, 53 degrees. So angle of depression. Um, so here's what you can do. What do you call when you have two lines, two parallel lines, cut by a single line? Transversal. So there is a relationship between the 53 degrees and this inward angle right here. What relationship do these two angles have? Alternate interior. What do we know about alternate interior angles? They're congruent. So once we got that going for us, what is the length of the slide? So I want you to think about this because we get this wrong a lot. Here is, okay, so I know we said ladders don't go up, but on a slide, we all know what a slide looks like. You climb up the ladder or whatever. What part of this is the slide? Is it the blue or the green? Blue. Blue. So it says find the length of the slide. So you're finding the hypotenuse. Yep. Is everyone okay with that? This is the slide. With a little ball cap. Oh, looks like he's a duck. Anyways. So, 
We are, are we going to use a Pythagorean theorem or a trig ratio? Trig ratio. We are going to use sine, I agree, because we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So sine from, we said, 53 equals the opposite, 12, over the hypotenuse, x. Do I need to flip this one? Yes. I do. All right, so then what do I do next? Multiply by 12. Multiply by 12. Round it to the nearest tenths. 15.0. 15.0 feet.